Hi, this is Dr. Jenny Byrne. I'm a psychiatrist at Cognitive Psychiatry of Chapel Hill. And today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how psychiatrists approach people with mental health issues. And this is a question that I think there's a lot of mystery around and it's really not all that mysterious. So I hope that this is a little overview that gives you some good insight. So I think the first myth is that psychiatrists can somehow read people's minds that we're trained to just look at someone and immediately know everything wrong with them and how to treat them. And this is certainly not true. We can learn a lot by looking at someone, but we certainly can't get all the information we need. So typically, if we're meeting someone new for the first time that's coming in for an appointment, uh, we call it an intake appointment. And the reason we call it as an intake is because there's a lot of different kinds of information that we have to gather. Um, first, and this is the part most people think of, is just you know, talking with the person, asking them what's going on in their lives, why they're coming in for help, what's bothering them. So kind of like what's happening currently that's distressing them and bringing them in for help. So we would call that the history of the present illness, kind of what's happening recently that's caused a problem. The next thing we do when we talk with someone is we go into the past history and we're going to ask questions about mental health history, family history, substance abuse history, but we're also going to ask questions about medical history, um, surgical history, medication history, um, and this is actually a very important part of what a psychiatrist does as opposed to a psychologist. So a psychiatrist, you remember, is a doctor that completes specialty training in psychiatry. So we're able to prescribe medicines as well as to prescribe psychotherapy. So we have to be thinking about not just the psychological issues, but also the medical issues, past medical history, other medicines that the person is taking. So our history is twofold. We get a psychological part of the history, but we also get this medical part of the history. Um, during our initial interview, we're probably also going to ask questions about what we call like symptom clusters. So say you someone comes in and they say, I feel depressed. We're probably going to ask other questions about depression. Like for example, are you having trouble sleeping? Are you having trouble eating? Are you having trouble getting out of bed in the morning? And we're going to go through all of these questions because these are things we know are related to depression and some of them are actually diagnostic criteria for depression. So we're going to ask questions. We're also probably going to ask some questions you may not expect. So we may ask you questions if you've ever had a hallucination or a delusion. And I think it's important to know that just because we ask this question doesn't mean we think it's happening. We really have to ask this as part of our history. Similarly, if you say you're depressed and psychiatrist asks you, are you thinking about death or dying? Are you thinking about suicide? It's not because we think you are, it's not because we want to take you to the hospital. It's because as part of our assessment, we're required to ask some of these questions. So some of the questions may seem a little out there to you, um, but it's really part of this complete assessment part. Um, so the main thing we do with someone when we're trying to help them and assess them is to have a clinical interview. Now what we're also doing, you remember we said that sometimes people think we can read your mind. We can't read your mind, but we can observe you as you're speaking with us. And we do what's called a mental status exam. It's kind of like if you go to the primary care doctor and you know they check your eyes, they check your ears, they look in your mouth, they do a physical examination. For psychiatry, typically we're going to do a mental status examination. And we're going to listen to how you're speaking, what your eye contact is, what you're talking about, how your thought process is organized, how you look in terms of your affect, your, do you look depressed, do you look anxious, what's your body language saying. So we are going to be observing you as you speak with us, but this is part of our physical examination. Um, sometimes a psychiatrist will actually do parts of a physical examination, like for example, they might check for tremors, they might watch you walk, or they might do some other things like that, but the most common is to just do the talking and observation. Another way we might approach someone during the assessment is to get what we call corroborative or um, 
outside information from somebody who knows you well. So we might ask to speak with a family member or a good friend or someone um, who knows you well. And this isn't because we don't believe you. People think that we ask for this because I don't believe you. It's not the case at all. We really hear you and believe you, but we have to get outside information sometimes because certain kinds of mental illness make it very hard for the person to observe themselves objectively. So it's very helpful to have an outside person give their description of what they see so that we can really understand how to help you. Um, sometimes we might approach mental illness with a test, um, like for example, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. We might um, do some attention testing. We might ask you to do some questionnaires from time to time. And then remember there's that medical piece of the puzzle. We may ask you to get lab work done. We may ask to get information from your primary care doctor. Or in unusual circumstances, we sometimes may even ask you to get a head imaging study or an EEG, which is measuring your brain waves. That's pretty rare that we ask for that, but sometimes we might. So when you think about how we approach someone with mental illness or you know, other mental health issues, we really are taking a holistic view because we are a psychiatrist, so we're trained in the medical part and the psychological part. So we're going to be doing a clinical assessment, talking with you. We're going to do some observation, what we see and how you look. We're going to maybe talk to someone else who knows you well. We might ask for lab work. We might get some testing done. Um, so it's really can be kind of a complicated process, and I think sometimes that's frustrating to people because they want to come in and they really want that answer right away. You know, they don't feel good and they want that answer like, well, what can you do to fix it right now? And sometimes it takes us a little time to gather that information and that can be very frustrating for people to wait. But the reason we do it is to really get a full picture so that we can give you the most accurate diagnosis and the best treatment plan. So I hope this has been helpful. Um, please feel free to follow us on social media and Look forward to speaking with you again. Thanks.